Hello and welcome to Brandon Thursday, PM Express. My name is Nana Ansakwa and I'm sat here in the uh, Heritage Reception at the Alisa Hotel. Very cozy, something connects with our spirit, so we tend to end up ending up here. Last week we looked at brand identity, how it is important that your brand has an identity, whether it be it your milk, your trainers or your car. Once upon a time, Rolls Royce says that at 60 miles an hour, all you could hear is the clock ticking. They were trying to tell you that that's a very quiet engine. And that's how they connected with their customers. Today, we are looking at brand strategy, positioning your brand. Where do you position it? If you do a tin of milk, are you targeting that the queen comes to buy it? Or are you targeting that the average Joe comes to buy your milk? How do you use strategy? I mean, the average Ghanaian thinks, well, Kofi has set up a water factory, so I'm also going to do a water factory. I mean, that's strategy enough, isn't it? But who's going to teach us is Sylvester Fish, a marine engineer and also a brand expert. And as I say, thank you very much for giving us all his Thursdays this month so that we can educate ourselves on the importance of branding. Sylvester, you're welcome again. Thank you very much. So last week was pleasure. fantastic. You know, I got to realize that you know I drive past many filling stations until I get a goil, and then I buy because there's something that connects to me. Number one, I think they will give me a proper measure. Number two, I just think the surroundings is clean enough. And number three is Ghanaian, and it's goil, so why not? <laughs> but today, what informed goil's strategy and position themselves so that I come to buy petrol from there? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Nana. I mean. <clears throat> It's important that even at business schools, there is a book we call The Art of War mm -hmm. by Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu was a Chinese general that lived about a thousand years ago. The major principle of warfare has to do with what the Greeks call stratagem. Strategy comes from the word stratagem in Greek. It means a guideline to win in a military warfare. So when you hear the word strategy, it has to do with intelligence, market intelligence. If it's a, war, a typical warfare, it has to do with intelligence, gathering data about your, in quote, your enemy or behind enemy lines or whatever. So it is important that businessmen and businesswomen understand that the terrain of business can just be equated to warfare. Because if you're going to war, you're going to war against your opponents, and they have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it is important that you understand your strengths as a business person. Now, your strength could be your best price that you're bringing to the market. Your strength could be the best location that you're bringing to the market. Your strength could be your best customer service that you have that is unequaled anywhere. Your strength could be best financial auditing. It means you have financial discipline because I can tell you that there are some companies that have no financial discipline in terms of procurement and global supply chain. They buy anything anyhow and then you end up exceeding, we call it excess inventory. The reason is that you must have something we call min max, you understand? So, and which of course has to do with your usage history vis-a-vis -vis the kind of product you're using. So strategy, as I'm talking about, I'm going to narrow down to very systematic, consistent, and routine, but dynamic plans that you put in place to scientifically position the value of the brand in the consumer's mind, strategy. Now, first and foremost, when you're going to any warfare, you use tools, weapons, you have your infantry, you have your archers, you have your knights, your people who you know, parade and whatever. It is not just enough having all these varied forms of weaponry. It is how you deploy them and when you deploy them with a firm understanding about your enemy's first point of attack. You understand? Why am I using military to explain? Because even in drilling, we have to use strategy. 
That is why you have certain people from the U.S. Marines and the U.S. Navy occupying certain positions offshore, like subsea supervisor and mechanical supervisor, etc., etc. What are your strategies? One, you have your marketing communication tools. That is what you use, which means the media, your newsprint, your banners, that is where your newsprints and your banners and your radio ding jingles come in and then your television commercials and executive interviews and documentaries, etc., etc. But the question is, how and when do you remind these co consumers about your value? The reason is consumers easily forget. Ask yourself, why would 1759 Guinea that has been in existence for more than 230 years still be advertising because the brand experts and the brand specialists know that in addition to the human condition there is a tendency to forget over time you will just you will just be relegated it's not your fault it's a human condition if someone used to call you and the person stopped calling you for more than one year, automatically it goes out of blank until, hey, you, you remember or something crosses your mind and say, hey, I've not heard about this person. That's the human condition. So that is why we need to understand that first we are dealing with human beings before consumers. And human beings have to be reminded. Others will be reminded on a weekly basis. That is why you have certain companies that put in certain commercials every week. Now, depending on the kind of product you're using, if it's a car, you can say that since it's a car and it's not everyone that can buy a car, you can say, I'm going to remind them about this brand every month. As to whether you use a radio jingle or you use a TV commercial or you use a newsprint or you use a banner or you use an event entertainment kind of a thing, that has to do with the personal strategy of the firm. And the kind of strategy you use is dependent on the kind of product or service you are rendering. If it's a high-powered, um, what do you call it, a telecom firm, and you believe that your services are easily patronized, then, of course, they will say that we don't necessarily have to be advertising every month. We can advertise every two months, buy a 60-second 60, uh, 60 commercial and advertise. If you are actually coming out of school and you want to set up a business, at the initial stages, you don't really have a lot of turnover revenue. So you can't say that I'm going to this TV station and give me a 60-second commercial. A five-minute interview may cost you more than 4,000 CDs. I mean, you're just starting. How you don't have enough money. So depending on the level of budget you're running and then where you have gotten to in terms of a startup, an intermediary, a full-blown conglomerate, that actually informs what kind of marketing communication tool you actually subscribe to in terms of your budget. Mm -hmm. Maybe a startup may go, let me start with call cards. And this is what I want to say. Starting small does not mean starting inferior. It is important that every stakeholder understand this. Once you come out of school, devote yourself to excellence. Commit yourself to exceptional quality. Make sure that your core card is reflecting quality because you are now starting. Someone may decide to put the core card in his wallet and one day hey, look, this guy gave me his call card. Even the texture of the call card alone can inform the person to say, when did you say you want to meet me? That's the beginning of the process. But if you say, okay, I'm now starting, I don't have money, you just go to any graphic designer and the person does anything for you because you think you want to be smart. Let me just cut cost. At the end of the day and in the long term, and that's what I have to say, folks need to think long term. So, you, so you're saying that strategy begins from day one? It begins from day you one. You don't go into the business and then no. strategize? No. Strategy is based on information and is based on intelligence. It's everywhere. The high-powered international military organizations, 
NATO and all that, they don't just get up and deploy airstrikes and stuff like that without an informant. You get what I'm saying? But they, they have been uh, in the system for a while. They've been on the battlefield. They've won. They've lost. Therefore, you know, but if I've just come out from school, we might I just have to dive in head first and see if it's deep or not and then, you know, swim up or swim, no, swim no, in. No, no. Business is warfare. You see, business will be part of your life till God calls you. So it is important that you understand the terrain. And who are you dealing with? You're dealing with human beings. And once you're dealing with human beings, you need to understand how they think and feel about issues. Until you understand the mind of human beings, you can't be in business. You, 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 you're close. Because you will go into business with your own understanding. Have you realized that there are some people, they, they force certain products on certain consumers? No. It is the consumer actually that determines the demand, whether they like it or not. So you create your strategy to meet the needs of the consumer. If you come out of school and you want to go into ISP, Internet service provider industry. Remember, there are other internet service providers already. You're coming from just University of Ghana or Legon or Valley View or Radford or whatever. But we have other big giants already. Zipnet and others. You are now coming. So first of all, what do you do? That is the, that is the war terrain. There are already opponents there. I'm using the word open end because in the, in the military warfare, but in terms of business, you call it competitors. There are competitors there who are vying or have already gotten the, uh, the consumers already, but you are now coming. So what do you do? You must analyze their strength. What are they doing now? And what can I do or add that is unique, attractive, and different? The how you go about it. If the norm, normal popular adage of getting their customers is through any of the marketing mix, and that's it, what, what do you do? Maybe you can put up a corporate event about internet service, or you throw an insightful seminar where you invite corporate leaders and IT managers of banks and telecom firms and insurance to come and listen. That is how you break into the market. You follow what I'm saying? Maybe that has not been done very well. And depending on your budget, maybe you, of course, um, you come out with a nice buffet, they eat your lamb. But you know that at the end of the day, you want to connect with them on an emotional level because you are now coming into the scene. And the way and the manner in which you penetrated has not been executed by any of your competitors before. That will be your competitive advantage. In warfare, it is called first move. If you do martial art, you will understand me. First move. The first law of negotiation is your positioning, how you stand and where you stand from. Hmm, that is very difficult because I'm still working on the uh, newcomer coming into business. And like you said, you know, there are big sharks out there who've been in business and I mean, I, I admire those who failed and come back. They are like, you know, <laughs> lethal weapons. Exactly. They failed before and they've come back. Exactly. So they know exactly where not to threat. Precisely. You know, so when, when you are coming in, people, what, what, what chance do you have? You know, where, where, do you, where do you turn? What new have you got? You know, I have realized that a lot of work has to be done on making people develop very strong mental attitude. It's all about the mindset people have before they even come out of school. You understand? The one thing I have realized anytime I'm around is that a lot of folks can't differentiate between friendship and business. They mix the two together. But the two are not the same. And that is what people have to understand. I am your friend, you are my friend. But when it comes to business, I need to follow the full principles and the full rigors of due diligence, you understand? I can't say because you are my friend, so I need to flout certain financial principles and all that. That is what I have realized, is the mental discipline with which people approach business, the attitude and the belief, and the work ethics is lacking. 
I will, I will get there. But okay. I'll take a break here, and then when I come back, I mean, look at the terrain. I mean, people borrow, what, 30%, some ridiculous <coughs> amount of percentage that looks like a telephone number to run their business. Now that you are now coming in, you know, so I just really want to find out what strategy a newcomer will have, because I know many of you listening are now trying to end, venture into the market. And there are big boys in there who have money, who have collateral, you have not. No bank would listen to you. And yes, still you need to sit in your little room and strategize and come out. How do you do it? Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to the Heritage Reception at the Alisa Hotel, connecting with our emotions. They've positioned it so it connects with us. Before the break, I was trying to ask Sylvester this question because I know millions and millions of you out there want to start up. Money. You don't have money. The guys you're going to compete with are rich, filthy rich beyond their means. They've been in business, and guess what? They've even failed before and they are back up. So this time, they are full of experience and years ahead of you. You need to come up with a product that is a bit different from theirs so that I would buy yours rather than theirs. How do I even trust you to buy from you? Okay, thank you <coughs> One thing I'd like to say is that I have not seen anyone wear, wearing the pajamas to, the, to warfare before or someone wearing a swimwear to church. It means that every terrain has its own uniform. People who are actually into serious warfare, either on the ground, the army, you know the kind of dress they wear. People in the Navy have a certain kind of dress they wear. People in the Air Force, the pilots, maybe an Air Force fighter jet, has a certain uniform. G-force suit. Exactly, G-force suit, you know. Now, this should tell you something. In the business arena, there is a certain code of conduct. There is a certain way you dress because that is also the uniform of that terrain. But you find out that a lot of folks will say, okay, there is no money here and there. But you, if you look at his dressing, he may have a very good idea, maybe an idea in technology that no one has ever thought of. Maybe an idea in banking that no one has ever thought of. Maybe the person is coming out with a new financial derivative that will skyrocket, I mean, short to medium term equities. But when you look at the person's dressing, it puts you off. Why? It is a lack of understanding and a lack of education about this dude who is in the university. Maybe he or she may be studying business administration but he's taking the code of the conduct and then the uniform in that terrain for granted and that is it right from the onset the jss level the secondary school level the university level primary school they should be taught have you ever you you realize that there are certain schools you see the kids wearing tie and see why it's an indoctrination process. They are actually introducing them to the world of business right from the word go. So when they are around 21, wearing a suit and a tie is nothing to them. You understand? I always like to say, I am like this. This is how I dress. It's natural with me. It's not like anything so uncomfortable. Why? Because that is how I was also trained. So it's the training I know that you will need money to buy one or two so things. Would it just be suit and tie or would it be appearance? Because I'm, I'm not the suit and tie person, even though it's know, appearance. Mondays and Wednesdays I'll do it's a bit of jacket. But it's, it's not necessarily suit and tie, it's appearance. It's how you look as far as your terrain is concerned. As far as your ter terrain is concerned, whatever you are doing, whether you are selling bread or you're selling MTA, uh, like telecom credits or whatever you're selling food you're selling clothing shoes watches you're operating a school a hospital whatever you are engaged in that has to do with a medium of exchange know that there is a code of conduct so you're saying that as part of the strategy your, 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 your appearance is one of the strategies because if you're going to vouch or pitch an elevator pitch to a venture capitalist 
and you believe in your idea you know that when this idea or when this gentleman invests a 500k into your business it will bring about a lot of employment for the youth of the country but you dressed you dress it's like you've not taken particular attention to your grooming your idea may be good but it may put off that venture capitalist that look i believe in what you're doing but it's human nature he will not invest in it you understand maybe there may be another dude over there who has read one or two things about personal grooming and his idea may not be as so strong as yours but the guy has or the guy or the lady has dressed to suit the terrain he or she finds him or herself trust me he will have much more probable chance of being helped in terms of finances or invested in this is one of the strategy secondly as a business person you need to be your mind has to work differently how you process data and how you process things has to be different from the normal average person meaning that you have to look out for ideas and way everywhere unconscious ideas and ways with which you can add much more value or you can position your product at the forefront of the terrain that has to do with research meaning that when you surf online what do you surf for do you just go to websites that will just talk about you know things that really do not matter to you or you will go to websites that you know that there is an upcoming event there is an upcoming corporate event you know this is where the big guys are meeting so you go there you dress to meet the the the, the, the occasion it means that you are deploying the strategies mm -hmm. you understand these are the strategies apart from appearance what other strategies would you adopt apart from appearance the most important thing you have to understand is communication communication is a strategy communication and then time management the reason being that is because if you fail to understand the time with which you have to call someone and remind the person about an idea you spoke to you may come across even though your idea may be good and you believe in it you may come across to the person as intimidating meaning that you don't understand timing even if you want to remind someone by a text message how you go about it the you see I thank you very much this even reminds me you know people are used to writing shorthand I know that sometimes we all do that mm -hmm. but if you're going to meet a banker in a corporate institution or a telecom or someone you know who you know this guy is a professional and then you're writing shorthand and, trust me the person will associate your shorthand to what is going on in your in your mind it means you have a you have a short mind it's human nature you need to make sure you write very legibly and use the correct grammar even if it's a short sentence the person will know that look okay good afternoon sir a gentle reminder about this meeting that's it but if you write shorthand and you the person he or she may not want to associate with you or even do anything with you because you are not using the correct diction in the right terrain. Mm -hmm. If you have come to know him later, after two years, and he's now your pal, a shorthand, he understands that because mm -hmm. now you've proven yourself so to him. That is, that is what I'm calling the strategies, mm -hmm. the effective communication skills. The second, or well, one of the third strategy you can use is negotiation most people don't know how to negotiate sure. negotiating does not mean that you're being hard on the person It's finding an equilibrium point to actually take off and what I have realized is that a lot of folks can't really negotiate because they believe they know the person oh he's my friend I can't negotiate but the realm of business is different from friendship mm -hmm. You understand I can know you as a friend but when we are talking about business I move into a different mode because you need to be very logical I, I like your point on communication because uh, you know lots of people because they know you work in the media will approach you and say oh I have this idea 
and I think it will fly for TV or it will fly for radio. And he said, oh, tell me about it. And then you could tell that. I, I think there's more to it, but you're not selling it to me. I mean, whatever Thank made you, you because, you, you know, he has Thank a document you. that big. I'm saying, whatever made you write this document, I, I'm not connecting. Exactly. So you, you, you must have something good, Thank but you. you're not selling it to Thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. Mm. You've said it. You said mm. the whole thing. So the idea of selling whatever you, you know. Because you can, you can really find out people have very solid ideas. But when you look at the person and the way and manner in which the person is communicating the idea, you know that you have a sellable idea, but you're not, you don't have a sellable communication <laughs> skills. <laughs> The idea is good. The communication is not right. It's not sellable. <laughs> so in that, in that case, I mean, I know there are courses for communication yeah. and stuff. So you do you need to actively work on your communication or hire somebody who does communication? Or? I, I believe that if you, made, if you make up your mind to, to be excellent in, in your field, you would take the effort to read. Mm. The internet, we have, I mean, thank goodness for internet, is made up of billions of data. Maybe you may not have money to go for post-grad or do some, but go online and read some basic principles about communication. You understand? Mm -hmm. Even a normal handshake. Normally people shake hands and then they flip their fingers. In, in, honestly, in the corporate world, it's not really necessary to be doing that. Unless, of course, you are at home or you are at a party and whatever. But if it's a formal business meeting and this is the first time you're meeting the person, shake and don't flip. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the person understands that you know what you are doing. Okay? But all these soft skills, which is so important in business, eye the eye contact, which shows that you are confident in what you're saying, all these soft skills are relegated to the background. Our young ones take them for granted, only for them to be hit with reality after school. That life is not theory. Life is applied theory. It's all practicals. And you need to have them subconsciously. It has to flow without making an effort. Unconscious competence. So the strategy of effective communication, negotiation, appearance or grooming, these things are important. Presentation, even in whatever the pamphlet you used, presentation, how it has been laid out, all will communicate your personality when you are not there. This is what makes the ultimate decision. You understand? So this strategy I'm talking about in terms of positioning your brand strategy, it's all done how and when how and when i'm going to give you a typical example someone may be coming out of school and you've gone for a seminar and this resource person you know has spoken about financial um, maybe he's an investor or an angel investor and then you collected his card and probably you actually appeared very sellable to him. So he said, okay, give me a call. And then you gave him a call and he was not picking. Then you gave him another call, he was not picking. 7 p.m. you give him a call, he's not picking. 8 p.m. you give him a call. 9 p.m. you give him a call. What do you think will happen? The person will say, you are pestering me now. But when you give him a call once, twice, he's not picking. You need to understand that he may be occupied. The best thing you can do is text. And even when you're texting, don't give a whole story or an introduction or an executive summary or whatever. Go straight to the point because businessmen and women don't like to go about the bush. You need to state it very clear. Hit your target. You need to be a sniper. Go for it. And then the person knows he's dealing with someone who understands the rules of engagement. That is the whole idea. Trust me. That is the whole idea. We need to understand how to apply these strategies. Just, you may not see, you see, it's not, this warfare we are fighting in business is not ammunitions. It's a warfare of the mind. 
and how you apply intelligence. Of course, authentically, not duping people, but how you apply intelligence authentically. That is the warfare we are fighting now. It's no more manpower but brain power. Application of strategy is brain power. I'm, I'm going to give you another typical example. You are now coming out with an, organi an event organizing firm and you are organizing an event for the University of Ghana students. And you know that somewhere around May, they'll be they're going to write for their uh, semester exams, going for their long bar. And then in May, you started advertising, coming on television and saying that, oh, we're going to organize an event. The, the objective and the morale of the event may be good, or more or less is good. But the timing, because when it's, trust me, a student who has spent money and his parents are also waiting for him to come out with the first class or second class upper, will not leave his studies and come for an event. This is what I'm saying. Timing is strategy. You know that they are going to write an exams and then you come on television and radio and there's, because maybe we, we call it um, zeal over intelligence. You have so much zeal, but you don't have experience. So the zeal moves you. I'm coming to organize an event. I need to be on television. I need to come on radio. So the zeal moves you. You invest a lot of money in it and then only for you to... You, start, you go to the seminar and then you realize it's just one or two people. Maybe it's like a 150 seminar hall and then you realize there's 10 people who are there. I'm going to take a break here, but so once you have your idea, work on your communication, your appearance, and stick to your timing. Very, very important. When we come back, we're talking, well, this segment, we're looking at uh, strategy and positioning. I mean, what, what does it mean, position? Where do you, where do you position it? Where do you put it on the shelf or... You know, or the type of people you're accustomed to, stay tuned, we'll get educated, we're coming straight back. Welcome back, and we are learning about brand strategy and positioning. I'm kind of keen on the positioning. What does it mean, the positioning? And does that also begin at the beginning of the idea stage or you come into business, look into the terrain and decide, well, I'm going to take that position. So what's, what's positioning? What positioning a brand? Okay, positioning, it is actually owning a territory within the mind of the consumer. It is actually establishing a value territory within the subconscious mind of the consumer. There was an article I read from Blitz. Blitz is actually a brand article. And the CEO of Coca-Cola said that, should we lose all our global assets within a force majeure situation, we know that we will be able to recuperate all our assets back. But should we lose the memory of what Coca-Cola stands for and how it has been well positioned within the minds of our consumers, we are out of business. Very important. We are out of business because he understands that should people forget within a flash everything they have known about Coca-Cola, they are out of business because what will cost me to come and buy Coca-Cola? I don't know anything. But when I lose my assets, my equipment, my assembly within maybe a volcano or an earthquake or a burglary or a fire, I know that I can buy all these things because the guys who know that I have been able to establish a territory in their minds will come and buy from me and that is all sales revenue. Wow. So positioning is so important. And you see, this is what people don't understand. I have to say this to a lot of publishers. Don't just rush to publish books. You see... It's timing. You need to understand timing and position your value within the mind of the consumer. One, your book is not on the shelf. Oh. Your book is in the mind of the consumer who's going to buy it. So it's not just enough spending over 9,000 or 10,000 Ghana cities and then going to publish all these books and then you launch the book, the book which is the product and not the brand. You launch the product and then after two months, five books. After three months, 15 books. What have you done? 
the book first and foremost has to be positioned inside the mind meaning that you have to do and take your time take your time take your time to position whatever you stand for as an individual give yourself a space of time one year or two years speaking to people about the topic let them understand the topic then when you say okay there is a book they will go for it they are not going for the the shelf they're going for the territory you have actually gained in their mind and i need to say this because it transcends what we do on a corporate level at within the boardroom within the telecom boardroom the insurance room to how we even negotiate on an international scene the whole thing is a, is a game of chess once you don't understand what you're doing your first your first move of negotiation has been flawed it's a flawless victory the white hmm, the foreigner you are negotiating with understands this thing, that it's all a game. And once you are checkmate here, you're done. And that is what our high-powered stakeholders have to understand, that when we are negotiating anything for the nation, we must understand that our local content should gain more. The skill set should be more. Then we know that we are bargaining well. Not that, like I said previously, I mean, it's good to have foreign direct investments and trade liberalization policies, etc., etc. But the number of skyscrapers we have and the number of people in the country does not mean the local content is actually development. Because real development it's not just about skyscrapers. It's about the personal individual and how he or she applies knowledge and resources. So then positioning yeah. means that you can only position as far as you have technical ability. I don't know how to say it, but if I was going to do you know, my radio program, yeah. I would not talk about football because I can't position on football. I don't know anything about football. Exactly. So in positioning whatever idea that you bring, yeah. you should know that this is my territory. This is your authority. This is your authority. Because at the end of the day, excuse me, you can't major on minor things and minor on major things. That is why even in medicine, we have people who specialize in nephrology. Nephrology is the study of the kidney. They will study everything about the human physiology, but I don't, they, they need to be experts in certain organs so that they know that nothing can flaw them in that area because they've devoted 100% of their time studying about the heart or the spleen or the kidney or what have you. That is why if you're an expert, you need to go deeper. People need to consult you in that field because that is your authority. You understand? It is important that you don't necessarily have to do so many things at the same time. Because when you do that, you confuse the consumers. They don't know your area of speciality. Mm -hmm. You have certain financial ins institutions that so many things at the same time, so many things at the same time, then you confuse the consumer. Or maybe you are an actor, then you say, I'm a director, and then I'm a producer at the same time. We all know you can be, but first, we call it primary brands. Build a strong primary brand first before you begin to have something we call brand extensions. You're using that flagship product brand, which has been well known over five years or ten years. Then you create a sub brand within a different market or along the same product class. You understand? I'll give you an example like Puma. Puma actually is into fashionable sportswear. You know that they do shoes, sportswear. But you've realized that they've entered into a, a different market segment, which is bags. Mm -hmm. They do bags as well. You know, fashionable sports bags. That's a different market. Mm -hmm. They're using the same flagship product brand, but in a different market segment. You see? Mm -hmm. And then some can also say that I'm going to use the same primary 
flagship product brand, but in a different product class. It means within the same market, but different product class. An example is the Coca-Cola, and then we have the Coke Diet. You see? The same beverage, but different product classes. Mm -hmm. Shoes and bags are not the same market, different markets, yeah. you see? So that is an explanation between brand extensions and then line extensions. An example is the multi-TV. A primary flagship product brand is the Joy FM. But you realize that underneath these is separate, what do you call it, product classes and then different market segments, like the radio and the TV. Positioning. I mean, there's a young guy listening, there's a young woman listening uh, who wants to come into business. Now, we've told him that uh, brand strategy, you know, they have to look at the appearance, the way they will pitch their idea, look at their timing, and now positioning. So what are they going to do? Search within themselves and say, listen, I'm going to do bags that the arms are never going to rip up because I'm a good, you know, handbag stitcher. Or, you know, what, what do you do to bring, you know, to position your item? Exactly. First and foremost, you need to have an authority in whichever service you're provided. The word authority there means that you have technical competence, you are skilled. It means that you have advanced in your skill and knowledge in that field. I'm going to use an example, which everyone can actually use. Offshore, we call something CAKES, C-A-K-E-S. It means that you can't operate a top drive or you can't operate a mat pump if you are not complied, you don't comply with the procedures for what we call energy isolation. You must be authorized, you must have knowledge, you must have experience, and you must have skill set. These are the five things that you have to check across what was something we call the risk prompt card. You do a risk prompt card and check whether you need extra supervision or you are experienced to operate it on your own. So whatever you are coming to do, make sure you have a kicks checklist. I mean, of course, I mean, you can apply it, but make sure that you have knowledge, you have experience, you have skill set, you authorize, you, are you complying with the rules of the game over there? You follow what I am saying? Whether you're into Forex Bureau or whatever, are you complying with the interbank rates from the BOG? This is the whole idea. You understand? So it is, it is not so much of just getting up and doing something because you believe that like hunches, you know, oh, I believe I have a, a, a talent in acting, then you just go and act. You need to, first and foremost, perfect the craft until it is natural, until you can now do it unconsciously. Can you, can you survive? Can your brand survive without positioning? No. The positioning is the mind of the consumer. It means that you are taking your time rigorously, ruthless aggressive tactic, okay? A tactical aggression of actually positioning whatever your product stands for. If it's excellence or quality or best price or best luxury brand or whatever, whatever is coming out of that product which is unique from the market segment, your ability to make sure that when a consumer even closes their eyes and opens up and you mention the name, they can ascribe it to this that is positioning. It means you've gained a territorial stronghold within the mind of the consumer. I'm going to give you an example. When we mention out of Hitler, what comes to mind? Concentration camps. Concentration camps. You see, when we mention out of Hitler, concentration camps. When we mention Idi Amin, we know what we will ascribe it to. When we mention Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, we know what we ascribe it to. When we mention Ya Asantua, we know what we can ascribe to. So you see, it means that these names have gained territorial strongholds within the consumer's mind. Mm. They may not be businessmen and women, but they are brands in themselves. Like what we said over the, some few weeks ago, that anything that has a name has a brand, whether you like it or not. The most important thing is what are they saying about your brand? Are they saying something good or bad? Whatever you're doing or saying every day, you are consciously communicating with your parents, with your fathers, with your mothers. That is it. 
So the positioning is gaining a territorial strong. And this is so important for the whole nation. We need to understand this. And it has to be deliberate. It has to be deliberate. It is deliberate. But not dubious. It has to be authentic and deliberate. Because the consumers don't know your brand promise or your brand message. And until you constantly execute them, your execution is the consistent position. It means that you, you, you are bringing it to their minds every now and then. And how well you do that, it may take you one year, it may take you two years, it may take you three years. Now, after you've been able to do it, if you say that you're going to launch a book, you wouldn't have problems with sales. If you say you're going to establish a restaurant, you wouldn't have problems with people coming to the restaurant. Why? Because you've gained a territorial mind. So actors, actresses, businessmen, businesswomen, doctors, lawyers, cities, countries, business schools can all be positioned. And that is why I'm going to ask a question. What is Ghana known for? One thing only that Ghana is known for. Cocoa. Okay, cocoa. And maybe hospitality. Yeah. Exactly. So if we are known for these, how do we put this thing in a 45-second commercial or a 60-second commercial, take the best shots in the whole country, package it within a 60-second commercial or a 120-second commercial, and then put it on an international media platform for one year? How do you think it's going to affect the way the world looks at Ghana? Position yourself. Positioning. So the first thing anyone who has not even heard about Ghana, because there are some people who have not. <laughs> if, if I move over, Kuduka, there's some people who have not. Even, oh, okay, Africa. No, Africa is not Ghana. Ghana is a country. So you see, there are so many things that people don't know. But once it's there, immediately they see, oh, Ghana, the nation of hospitality. Thank you very much. Well, folks, well, we started with... Uh, brand and branding and then we moved on to uh, brand identity and today we've looked at strategy and positioning of your brand next thursday is even going to be mind-blowing do not miss the branding thursdays now that's what we do here on pm express we try and bring everything to the basic levels that we talk about so we're devoid of all technicalities and since i've been taught to let my you know viewers and my customers, you, the clients know what I do. That's what we do. We talk about everything, but we try to bring it just on the sitting room level. Devoid of technicalities. Folks, tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks, Sylvester. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>